Tri-County Human Services Incorporated is a private, not-for-profit organization providing substance abuse, mental health, and co-occurring treatment to residents of Polk, Hardy, and Highlands counties. Tri-County Human Services Incorporated, which is CARF accredited, is a United Way of Central Florida member agency and participates in the Community Foundation of Greater Lakeland and the Give Well Community Foundation. Learn more about Tri-County Human Services next on Bayside. Good afternoon and welcome to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelly Sanders. We've got with us today, Mr. Don Van Stee. You are the Administrative Services Director for uh, the Tri-County Human Services That's correct, Corporation, yes. correct? Thank you for having me. Yes, we're excited to have you here. I know that you guys do a lot of work with um, with other agencies that we've had on the show many, many times, longtime friends of the show. Um, this is your first time here, and I was wondering, can you tell me a little bit, I know I discussed a little bit, kind of a broad umbrella, if you will, of what you guys do, but how exactly did you get founded? What caused that start? And uh, tell me about some of the services you provide. Sure, back in 1974, which was before I was born, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but back in 1974, a group of concerned um, grandparents had um, grandsons that were alcoholics. And they were concerned that there was not enough services or information regarding alcoholism in Polk County at that time. So they, they got some information that they had, had gathered through research and printed out material. And from the back of their station wagon in 1974, they set up camp at um, US 98 and Clubhouse Road in, in, in Lakeland and started handing out flyers. That developed into um, Tri-County Addictions being formed. Um, and in 1976, we became a uh, 501, official 501c3 from the, from the Internal Revenue Service. From that time forward, <coughs> we acquired a detox facility in, that we have in Bartow right now that services Polk and Highlands and Hardy County. And we also um, expanded our services um, from an outpatient point of view. So we started from an outpatient that we had it in Lakeland and then we moved to Wachula and also down into Avon Park close to Sebring in Highlands County. Um, over some time we developed um, residential programs that um, are for both men and for women. And we now have, we've expanded those residential programs to seven in the county. We have um, four outpatient facilities and we expanded um, into the mental health world. About eight years ago, we founded a, uh, an agency called Meadowbrook Psychiatric and Counseling Center, which we now have um, several psychiatrists, about six nurse practitioners, licensed practitioners in terms of licensed mental health counselors and um, um, certified medical assistants that help in that area. So now we're, we're, we're primarily at the time a substance abuse treatment facility and now we do both substance abuse and mental health. And the reason for that is most of the people that come to us have what we call co-occurring disorders. So they may come with a primary substance abuse at that time, but they have secondary mental health facilities or vice versa. They may have a, private, a primary mental health and a secondary substance abuse. So we are, we are prepared to, to handle that at, um, at our locations. We've expanded also to include children we have, um, we have a residential facility where girls that have been in treatment and have gone through most of the residential facilities, we have a program that they can step down and if DCF has, has taken over the responsibility for their kids for the foster program, um, they at, we have a program that reunites their, their, their parents with their children, mostly the mothers with the kids. And, um, they're, and when they're in that facility, they have two goals. Um, they um, become employed or they get education to become employed after that. And so somebody, a female that's in our facility now can go and they can come through any door. Well, if they present and, they, and it's better for them to go to residential, we can take them there. Or if it's better for them to go to detox, we take them there. Or if it's better to go to outpatient, we go there. 
So there's, quote, no wrong door that they can go to. But a female in our, in our program and, and with the system of care that we have can be involved in tri-county treatment for two, two and a half, three years. And um, most people know that um, in, in the world of addiction, you don't get better in six weeks. Mm -hmm. You don't get better in 55 days. Um, it's a process and our process can be what it needs to be able to treat that individual individually and come out with the best outcomes possible. Fantastic, wow. It almost sounds like it's impossible to be able to do this just underneath your, your services alone. Like you definitely need those partners from the community or that <coughs> you would, it seems to me like you would need other people to kind of help facilitate. Worst case scenario, you get individuals you could have, you'll have the resources of where to take that person or where to send that person, correct? The, well, um, yes and no. Um, Tri-County <coughs> within the state of Florida is probably offers the broadest array of system of care that we have. Um, but what that means is that we don't just concentrate on substance abuse and we don't just concentrate on somebody work in an outpatient basis for eight weeks and oh by the way they get involved in the court system they have to have some other things we can in, we can engage that person whether in the court system or whatever referral source they have um, and so a lot so those and what happens is that when those individuals are are with us the counselors follow them all the way through but if we do have to refer out, if there's something within the all community. All the way through to a solution? Right, yeah. Or we refer out to a community-based organization that has um, other types of resources available to them, like vocational training that we have that needs to be done or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we, 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 we'll follow that individual from the time they leave us during their treatment at that other location. And then once they're discharged from that location, we pick them back up and follow them under aftercare. So if they have issues while they're out experiencing the, the real world, as we put it, um, they have support to do that so they're not alone. Um, one of the biggest things that we try to work on is to give them value-based decision-making abilities. When, when somebody's an addict, um, they, we, sometimes people will concentrate on what really triggered your alcoholism and Give them, give them ways to help combat that. But sometimes it isn't just that specific trigger that triggers those kind of things. So we give them a value-based system that, oh, if, this, if they're presented with this particular issue, here's the best way that they can make the decision to stay clean and sober during their recovery. Which, my goodness, that's almost like a magic pill, really, if you think about it, because that's giving them the tools they need yes. to, to be able to recognize that. Donna, I have so many questions. It's, it's a good okay. thing you're here, and it's a good thing we're going to come back after this break that we're about to take. But for you at home, I know you're probably sitting here just like I am. I've got a lot of questions. Well, here's where you're going to go. Anything and everything that Don and I speak about today regarding the Tri-County Human Services, their, their campuses, their services, programs, etc., it's going to be on that website, tchsonline.org. Why don't you guys check it out while we take a little break? But we'll be back to continue our conversation, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelly Sanders. I've been speaking with Mr. Don Van Stee, and you are fantastic information here, just a lot of it as well. Um, I love having you here so that you can inform our viewers of what's out there and the great things that you guys are doing. So many things, uh, it's, it's almost hard, like, ah, where do I want to start? Because, it, like I said, you guys do so much, and it's so relevant and so, so important that you're doing this work because Obviously, you have people coming in all of the time. That said, it sounds like you've got so much going on and the fact that you, you really guys, you really do have a hands-on, do a hands-on job with the, you know, with the counselors following all the way through uh, whatever that avenue is. That said, the number of people that you're able to help, is there a cap on that? I mean, how, how, do, you, <clears throat> how do you handle that covering Polk, Hardy, and Highlands counties, each with their individual crises, if you will, on their own. And that, that is true. Um, 
We, we serve anywhere between five and 7,000 individuals every year. And wow. those are, when I talk about individuals, I'm not talking about somebody that comes in our facility and then three months later they come back into another facility. That doesn't count as two, that's still just one person. So five to 7,000 individuals that we serve annually. Um, I didn't bring all the demographics, but we, we serve a number of individuals. When I first came in here, you hardly ever saw anybody that was over 55, and you hardly ever saw anybody that was under the age of 18. You hardly saw anybody that was female. And now almost the numbers that the number of males and females we serve is almost 50-50, and females a little bit higher right now than the males. Um, individuals that are into their 80s, are there and then also we have kids that are as young as six or seven that will come in for treatment especially on the mental health side um, <clears throat> so there's a that we serve the community and as i said earlier there's no wrong door and so when somebody comes in we do the evaluation and we make the recommendation in some cases <coughs> because they're court ordered they have to start at a detox facility or whatever else right. but we have we have um, our programs are designed to meet their individual needs Right. So if somebody is rather involved in their, in, their, in their treatment, we will put them into a higher level of care from a residential side. And as I said earlier, we have I think seven, in, seven um, residential facilities, one co-educational one, there's three on the female, or four on the female side and three other ones on the male side that are, are, are strictly um, divided by the sex. So the right. male and female are together in one program and other than that, they're, they're separate. Well, and really quickly, how, uh, let me ask you this. Let's back up just a smidge. How do people get into to this facilities, <coughs> or how can they access your service? Perhaps we even have viewers that are in one of those counties that are thinking, you know what, my son, my daughter, myself, <coughs> whatever the case may be, how do I access your services? How do these people come to you? We have designated in every one of our outpatient loca locations open access days. So in down in Highlands County, it could be Wednesday, Thursday. Up in Hardy County, it could be on Wednesdays. Up in Polk County, it could be a couple of days a week. That's open access. You don't need an appointment. You don't need to call. All you have to do is, if you have an issue, you can show up. And when you show up, what happens is that people get an evaluation. They do an assessment. Um, they'll, f they'll, they'll work with that individual to find out where it's best place that they need to go. In other words, if it's at, at outpatient, if they're showing up under open access, we'll treat them under, under that way. But if they came in and we test them and their blood alcohol is 0.025 or 0.03 or 0.06, um, we'll refer them to detox to get them detox and they'll stay there for three to five, seven days, depending upon the detox protocol. And then we refer them to the next level of care that they need. So it could be outpatient, it could be residential, <coughs> depends upon that individual. There is, if it, and it, there's not a requirement that you have to make so much money or have to have insurance. We treat anybody at any income level. We have sliding scale fees that help reduce the cost for that individual coming in. <clears throat> we have, so, and so, if, and, and sometimes we qualify them through county programs we sure. have, qualify them through DCF. Department of Children and Families through Medicaid and or insurance. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that's a big deterrent for a lot of people in getting help is, oh God, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So that said, you also work with the homeless, I understand. <coughs> you, tell me about the housing uh, yes. program that you have. <coughs> in, um, <coughs> in back in April, we announced that we're Tri-County's building a, in conjunction with a partner called Castle down in Sarasota. We're building a 68 unit apartment complex for affordable housing. Of that 68 units, we've set aside 19 different, 19 beds to be had what we call high need, high utilizers. <clears throat> what those are, are those people that have come into an emergency room or come into a, a crisis stabilization unit or a detox facility more than three times in a month. And so we're setting aside those 19 and those 19 beds are, um, the services are paid for by the Department of Children and Families and the rent is paid for by the Department of Children and Families and we will qualify them for housing vouchers or we'll qualify them for other types of uh, um, assistance for housing and Tri-County uh, does have some programs that, that we are sponsored by, by Polk County and by DCF to help pay for some of that housing. But um, um, we're, we're looking at right now that that will be open sometime in late December, early January of 2025. And um, one of the nice things is on the campus, we will have with one of our partners, Central Florida Healthcare, we'll be doing primary and dental there. And then we'll also be doing clinical work. So the, the residents there will have available to them 
basically across the street. I mean, it's nothing more than probably a, a two minute walk to get from their apartment to the facility that we'll be, we'll be building there for that. Well, Don, that's outside your tri-counties there, so you're gonna end up be, just, just call it Florida, right? Mm -hmm. at, at some point, because I gotta think, other counties are looking at you all like, hey, wait, wow, you're really doing something. And if this facility is down in Sarasota County, well, add it to it. We do, <clears throat> our, count, our partners, uh, Castle, who is um, down in Sarasota County, they're, they're primarily into the homeless thing. Um, our other partner, Blue Sky, which is the contractor. But you're right, um, the, it, we're not limited to the three counties when it comes to homelessness. We're, we're limited only to our imagination of where we need to go and serve and how we can work with that community to serve those individuals. Um, and it won't be, we're looking right now for land that we're gonna try to purchase in Highlands County. Oh, wow. And we're looking for some already in, 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 in Hardy. But I'm working with Castle, they're down in Miami. Sure. They're up in Orlando. So there's a number of different things that, that we're looking at from the homeless population mm -hmm. because it never goes away. Wow, unfortunately. All right, well, hint, hint for you at home, if you've got any property in any of those counties that Don was mentioning, maybe you should call them and, That's right. and, and have, a, have a discussion. In the meantime, if you're wondering when these open access days are at any of their campuses, or if you just want more information, perhaps you want to volunteer, there's another hint for you. Well, you're going to log on to this website right here, th excuse me, tchsonline.org, tchsonline.org. Go check it out. We're going to break, but we're coming back to continue our conversation. Welcome back to Bayside. I'm your host, Shelley Sanders. We have been talking all about Tri-County Human Services and the wonderful things that they are doing here in the Bay Area. Yes, you guys uh, service three counties, but my goodness, you actually go beyond that, uh, really and truly, certainly as it relates to our homeless. Now, the issues that you guys deal with also, it, it, is, it sees no boundaries. It sees no income levels. It sees no race. It sees nothing, but it doesn't matter who you are, right? right. Homelessness, um, a, mental issues, drug addiction, sometimes, and, and I would say, even venture to say most of the time, it's co-occurring co disorder, right? It, it, both of yes. them happen at once. You've got a mental disorder and, and a substance abuse problem. Correct. So that said, you guys are, are, are ahead of the game. I got to think you're setting the bar, even so far as like nationwide, I think that people have to be looking at you like, wow, you're doing something right. That comes at a cost, and it certainly can't get done for free. So how are you funded? Well, we have several different primary funding sources. The first one is the Department of Children and Families, and we get appropriated funds through our managing entity, Central Florida Behavioral Health Network. And, um, but that, that particular funding satisfies, right now, on a recurring basis, satisfies less than half of our budget. The, the other part of our budget comes from county funding. Um, we get a substantial amount of funding from Polk County. We do a lot of program work for Polk County, um, also from Hardy County and from Highlands County. Um, then the next thing we look at is, okay, are, are people on any type of insurance? Mostly, a lot of these people are on Medicaid. Some are on what we call share of cost. Um, and if I had an hour, I couldn't cover all of share of cost issues. But basically, share of cost means that Okay, this month your deductible is 150 bucks, right. and one, and you have to pay that yourself. And we well, have to those work with individuals them. that have it That's know correct. what it is. Right, so. and then the other Medicaid, and then we do private insurance as well. Mm -hmm. um, the the funding that we get from the counties make up a, a mo almost the other half that we don't get from the Department of Children and Families. But then the insurances that we have from Medicaid and also private insurance like Aetna, United right, Care, makes sure. that up. So traditional routes. That's correct. And then of course, do you accept donations? Yes. You, I know you have fundraisers throughout the year and that's gotta be a huge, huge part of your, 
operating costs come from those fundraisers, right? So yes. For, um, what does that mean for you at home? It means that you need to check out this website because they do have a really fun event. I know that you guys have Christmas in July. There's a few different events. You can find out where they are and when they are right there on that website, tchsonline.org. Go check it out. We're going to break and we're coming back after this to wrap up this week's edition of Bayside, so don't go anywhere. As always, I want to thank you at home for joining us this week on Bayside. And of course, thank you so much, John, for coming and sharing all the wonderful things that you guys are doing in, in the Tri-County area and then some. And Keep up the good work. You'll have to come back and thank you. continue our conversation on another day. I'd love to do for that. you at home, I encourage you to get out every week and do something good for your community. I think this would be a great way to do it. Log on to their website, tchsonline.org. Have a great rest of your week.